Praise the Lord, everybody. We want to welcome you to Encounter Church this morning. I want you to go ahead and stand up and turn around and meet somebody and say, I'm so glad to see you here in the house of the Lord. I'm so glad that you made it. If you're not familiar with our style of worship, we believe in lifting up our hands because the scripture says the lifting of your hands is as the evening sacrifice is also a sign to surrendering to God. We believe in shouting out hallelujah. That just means the high praise to God. Come on, we believe in dancing in this presence because the scripture says to dance before him. Everything the Bible says is what we believe here at Encounter Church. So we want to invite you to go ahead and do the same. And let's not give God our leftovers, but our very best. Amen. song of faith if you walked in sick you're gonna walk out healed if you walk in bound you're gonna walk out free just a mention of his name just a mention of his name just a mention of his name everything can change everything can change if you walked in heavy you're gonna walk out like if you walked in weary you're gonna be all right just a mention of his name just a mention of his name just a mention of his name everything can change everything can change Say. if you walked in down you're gonna walk down if you walked in gonna fill your cup just a mention of his name just a mention of his name just a mention of his name everything will change everything if you walked in broken if you walked in broken you're gonna walk down home if you walked in lost he's gonna save your soul just a mention of his name just a mention of his name. Just a mention of his name. Everything will change. Come on, come on. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. One more time. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Walked in sick, you're gonna walk out healed. If you walked in down, you're gonna walk out walk free. Heavy. If you walked in heavy, you're gonna walk out light. If you walked in weary, you're gonna be all right. If you walked in down, you're gonna walk out up. If you walk Fill your cup. If you walk in broke, come on, you're gonna walk down home. If you walk in lost, he's gonna save you. Just a mention of his name. 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 Everything will change. Everything Just will change. Just a mention of his name. Just a mention of his name. Hey. Just a mention of his name. Just a mention of his name. Everything will change. His name is Jesus.
Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody just worship the Lord one more time. Come on. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Hallelujah. You know, I just I was so excited to sing that song because I was up there a little while ago and we were doing a recording. And Sister Samantha, where's Samantha at? Sister Samantha was Sister Samantha was out in the parking lot screaming, Hallelujah! She had got healed last night. She said she got the Lord touched her. She said she wasn't never able to get one night's sleep for years and years. But last night she slept like a baby. Just a mention of his name. Huh. That's her right there. Just a mention of his name. Come on. Just a mention of his name. Everything can change. Everything can change. Come on. Just a mention of his name. Just a mention of his name. Just a mention of his name. Everything can change. Just a mention of his name. 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 You sing it out. If you walk in mouth, you're gonna walk out free. If you walked in heaven, you're gonna walk out light. If you walked in weary, you're gonna be alright. If you walked in down, you're gonna walk out up. Come on, come on. If you walked in, empty, he's gonna feel your you walked in bro you're gonna walk you were in the boat you were one of the disciples and Jesus said come on I want you to step out on the water and I want you to dance on the water with me you know you can stay in the boat if you want to but if you step out then you just step up then you step into the promises of God I want you to see that see yourself doing it you step out you step up and you step into the promises of God some of y'all got to get out of your seats if you have to come all the way down here to the altar come on but we stepping out and up and into the promises
tell y'all something. Right now, my mind went back to this lady. She said, every morning, Pastor Portia, I step out, I step up, and I step into the promises of God. So right now, where you are, even if you can't get out of your seat, even if you can hardly move, just see yourself doing it. See yourself moving, doing things that you couldn't do before. If you could just right now, just even if you can only raise your shoulders, just go ahead and raise them to the glory of God. You just try right there, just lifting up your hands to the glory of God. Now I want you to do something for me. Here you go. Right foot. Up. Left foot out. We're going to sing this part one more time. You ready? See yourself right now stepping out. Step out, step up, step into the promise. Step out, step up, step into the promise. Step out, step up, step into the promises of the Lord. and step out into the promises. Some of us are seeming like we don't know what promise we're stepping into. So as we're singing, step out into the promise, I want you to declare right now, what promise of God are you holding on to in 2024? If it's for your healing, God, I'm stepping out into my healing. If it's for my family restoration, I'm stepping out into restoration today. Let's sing it again, church. You gonna get him there. Come on, come on, come on. say all the time, Pastor Portia, why do you worship the way you do? I used to be paralyzed and I had to drag my feet around like this, like a deformed person. And the doctors couldn't help me, but God, but God came through for me. Come on. That's why I can just say, for every time you've ever doubted him, say, I believe. Say, I believe. For every time you've ever doubted, 
Just sing it. I believe you, Lord. Yeah. I believe you, Lord. Help me sing it now. Never fail me, Jesus. I believe you, Lord. I believe. I believe you. I believe you. I believe.
great you are, how great, how great you are. My God, how great you are, how great, how great you are. Heavens are telling. Telling the earth how great you are. So we are responding to your love. The oceans are rising, they're rising and falling at your word.
Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Let's just lift our hands and our hearts. We're responding to your love. Come on, can you respond to his mercy this morning? Can you respond to his great mercy and his great love by which he loved us and washed us? He didn't come and judge us. He loved us and washed us in his blood. Are you thankful this morning? for the mercy and the love of our God. Can we respond to him? Come on, say, I'm responding. I'm responding. Lord, I'm alive. I'm responding. My spirit man is responding. Come on, can there be a, a response? Can there be a, a response? A response? A response? Hey! Just tell him. Just say, Lord, I'm responding to you. Hey! I'm alive because of you. I'm here because of you. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yes. I'm not dead. Come on. Look at your neighbor and say, you're not dead. You're alive. Say, he's great. Come on. Lay your hands on yourself and say, he's great in me. He's great in me. The greater one. The greater one. Come on. The greater one resides inside of you. Hey. Can we shout to the Lord today? Shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Yeah, yeah, yes. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we love you. And we love your house, the place where your glory dwells. It is Christ in me, the hope of glory. Come on, look at your finger, get your prophetic bony finger and look at your neighbor and say, it's Christ in you. The hope, of glory. the hope of glory. Now give somebody a high five. Hug them. I know we want to just keep worshiping forever here, and we will do that. Thank you, worship team. Deuce, if you could just stay there. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, don't stop worshiping. Don't stop worshiping. Yay! All of the children, you're dismissed. Come on, Pastor Ashley, she's going to transition the service, but all of our children, you're dismissed to your children's classes at this time. And hey, my God, my God, how great you are. Just lift your eyes, keep your eyes in the heavens. Ha. Huh. I better give this mic before I start singing here. Good morning, Encounter Church family. We serve a great God. Uh, I just want to welcome you. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning, whether you're here in person or joining us via the live stream. Uh, welcome. We hope you feel and sense the presence of God uh, wherever you are because we serve a living God um, and he is moving and doing miracles still today. Um, Pastor Steve has already dismissed um, our kids, nursery and elementary. Um, we mentioned last Sunday that for our middle school and high school, we now have a little VIP section over there uh, for middle school and high school. So if you're a middle school and high school, feel free to come over here and shout out to y'all. Um, 
Thank you, Pastor. Pastor Eugene is yelling out Judah. Our youth ministry is now called Judah. <clears throat> uh, worship is not over. We are going to continue worship. Uh, we're going to continue worship uh, with our giving, um, and as we prepare to give through the Lord, give to the Lord, uh, we do want to share um, a couple things that are coming up here at Encounter Church. Uh, but first, I just want to welcome any first-time visitors that are joining us for the very first time. Uh, welcome to Encounter Church. Um, in the seat pocket in front of you, there is a connection card. Um, if you want to find out more about Encounter Church, who we are, what's happening here, and what we're doing in the community, please make sure that you fill out that connection card in the seat pocket in front of you and you can return it at the information desk um, in the lobby so that we can continue to keep you updated on what is happening here and we just want to welcome you and we thank you for being with us here uh, this morning um, I'm going to go through a few announcements of some things that are happening at Encounter Church. Um, I often get up here and say, you know, there's, there's some exciting things happening at Encounter. But I'm going to say now there's some really exciting things happening at Encounter here in the new year in 2024. Um, and the first thing that we are excited about is our annual 21-day fast. So for those of you that are new to the Encounter Church family, at the beginning of the year, we always begin with a time and a season of prayer and fasting. Uh, so beginning Wednesday, January 10th, that's this Wednesday, we are going to enter into a time of prayer and fasting together as a church family. Um, so, you know, it's time to put them donuts away, okay? I'm not about to be at Chick-fil-A. Like, we are going to submit and yield to the Lord during this time of prayer and fasting. That means abstaining from food and re-surrendering ourselves to the Lord and committing our time to the Lord. And so uh, stay tuned via email this week. You're going to get more information about our fasting guidelines actually tomorrow. But just continue to prepare your heart, seek the Lord, and ask him what is it that he would put on your heart to fast during this time of prayer and fasting? What foods would he want you to give up and sacrifice for him as we draw near and draw closer to him? Uh, maybe there's other things that, indulgences that we need to abstain from, whether it's media or other things. Uh, but just be prayerful and know that we're going to fast for 21 days together as a church family. Uh, so look forward to your email tomorrow for more about that. Um, another really exciting thing that's coming up is this Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. We are um, launching our new Encounter Midweek, and it's called Rise. So some of you formerly knew Wednesday nights as Family Night. Uh, moving into the new year, our new Wednesday Midweek is going to be called Rise. Um, and you see on the screen there, Sewing. That is going to be our theme for our first eight-week course that's going to happen on Wednesday nights at 6.30 p.m. Um, and just to give you a little bit of uh, background, uh, the theme and the topic, or excuse me, the name Rise, it actually is found in Scripture in Luke chapter 22, verses 41 through 46, where Jesus asks his disciples to pray with him, and Jesus goes off to pray, and then all of a sudden he comes back, and the disciples is taking a nap. Um, and so Jesus comes to the disciples and he's asking them, why are you sleeping? You need to rise up and pray so that you do not get lured into temptation. And so that's where that theme rise comes from. So rise is going to be our time of prayer and Bible study on Wednesday nights. So make it a priority to be there Wednesday nights, 6.30 p.m. Um, as I said, it is an eight-week course called Sewing that is focused on evangelism. So we're going to spend some time praying and fasting. So if you have your phone, go ahead and take it out. Scan the QR code on the screen behind me so that you can register uh, for that eight-week course. And I believe, Pastor, Eugene, spots are limited. Is that correct? We have 50 spots uh, for that eight-week course. So if you want to get in where you fit in, go ahead and uh, make sure you scan that QR code so that you can uh, be part of this eight-week course that's going to be happening um, at our Encounter Midweek. Another super exciting thing that is happening this year at Encounter Church, uh, we also mentioned this last week, is our e-groups. <clears throat> 
Our, uh, one of our community directors over there is so excited, and so are we. Um, what was formerly Encounter Communities is now e-groups. So e-groups are a space where we can come together in community, um, in, in a small group setting, to grow in relationship with God, uh, to grow in relationship with each other, and discipleship. And so please make sure that you scan that uh, QR code as well so you can find out more about what days and times throughout the week that our e-groups are happening, um, what Bible study topics are are going to be available. We want to make sure that you get more plugged in into what is happening here at Encounter Church. Um, and last but not least, you know, I've already gone through a few exciting things, but there's more exciting things happening. And so if you just want to get more involved, you're like, you know, Pastor Ashley, you just said a lot. You guys said a lot of things last week about things that are happening that are new in this new year as we get a fresh new start. And as we pursue the vision that God has given us as a church family, um, scan the QR code to get involved. Um, there you can find out ways in which you can get more deeply connected into what God is doing here at Encounter Church. Um, and I know it's been a lot, so if you miss some of the QR codes, don't worry. You're going to get it via email tomorrow, and you'll be able to have all the information that you need. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's just a little snippet of what's happening at Encounter. Um, anybody else here excited besides me? That's what's up. Um, so yeah, continue to stay tuned. Please don't sit on the sidelines. Get involved because God is moving. The river is flowing and we all just need to jump in and be all in. Um, and so with that, we're going to continue our worship time with a time of giving to the Lord, um, giving our tithes and our offering. Um, and so, you know, usually when we come to this time of giving our offering and our tithe, um, you know, sometimes this can be a time where people start to feel a little bit uncomfortable because for some reason we feel uncomfortable when it comes to our money, right? You know, we, we feel a little funny about our money. Um, and so one thing that I just want to share um, briefly, which maybe some of you have heard me share before, is, you know, I'm someone who I'm a pastor's kid. I grew up in church and we were just always taught. I feel like I came out the womb and parents was telling me, okay, you got to give your tithe to the Lord. Like, it was just instilled in me from a very early age that we need to give our tithe to the Lord. 10% of what we receive, we need to give that back to God um, as an act of surrender and obedience to him. And so, you know, as I grew up and became an adult and then decided, you know, I'm getting a little bit more coins. What do I want to do with all these coins? Besides give them the Pete's coffee. Um, you know, I had to develop for myself a desire to really want to give to the Lord out of a posture of love and not out of religious obligation, not because mom and dad told me to, not because the pastor or the preacher got up on the mic and tried to convince me why I needed to give to the Lord. At some point, God began to transform my heart to where I wanted to give to him, not just my time and my worship, but to give my money, the things where it's a little bit more difficult to, to hand that over so easily, to really be generous to a God that has been abundantly generous to me. And so I share all that to simply say that as we enter into this new year, I encourage you just to continue to seek the Lord about how you can continue to fully surrender to him. Whether that's in your finances, whether that's in your relationship, in your thoughts, whatever it may be, let us step into this new year with a new posture of surrender, wanting to give God all, and not only all, but our best. I don't want to give God my sloppy seconds and my leftovers, and I don't want him to give me his sloppy seconds or his leftovers. And although sometimes we can acknowledge blessing as an incentive to give to God, my prayer is, God, let me not be so consumed with let me give to you because you're going to give something back. But let me be so in love with you, so committed to you, so devoted to you that I'm giving to you with no expectation. Already grateful that you are a great and mighty God that has given me more than I even deserve. And so I say that as an encouragement that you join me this year as we surrender to God, um, especially the area of finances, because it's just an area that's so challenging for us to relinquish control. 
and really give to our God who is so merciful. And so with that, I just want to pray briefly and then we'll receive our tithes and our offerings. God, we thank you, Lord God, for your presence. We thank you that you are here, that you are alive, that you are intervening and moving on our behalf in so many ways. God, we thank you that each and every person in this room made it here to 2024. We thank you, God, for your your blessings and your favor and your grace and your mercy that are new every morning, God. We thank you, Lord, that you are faithful. And so, God, I pray for us that you would stir faithfulness on the inside of us. God, that you would stir faith in us to continue to believe you and trust you with every aspect of our lives, including our finances. God, we thank you, Lord, that you are the God of the increase. God, that even what we see in our natural eyes, God, even when we feel that we lack, God, give us faith to see you as our provider. And so, God, we come to you now, God, in the same way, in the same postures of worship where we lifted our hands, God, where we bowed down before you and we surrendered our worship to you. God, we give you our worship through our finances this morning. And we ask, God, that you be glorified and honored And we thank you, Lord, for choosing us to partner with you in building your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, At this time, you can feel free to give. If you'd like to give in person, you can come up here and give in the silver buckets that are here on the stage. Um, You can also give at the card reader in the lobby back there. You can also give on the Encounter Church mobile app as well as the Encounter Church website. Um, And yeah, you can also scan the QR code um, and give here as well. Um, That is all the announcements that I have for us today. Love you, family. Awesome. Thank you, Ashley. And while we're we're giving, uh, I have a couple announcements. And then after this offering, later uh, in the service, we're actually going to take another offering uh, for Brother David and their ministry. And we just want to bless them. And so... uh, Amen. We're not, we're not ashamed of, of giving, and, uh, and so I just want to let you know what's going to happen later on today at the end of the service. One of us will get up there, because we was, are so appreciative of, of Brother David and his family and the ministry being with us today, and I'd like uh, Evan and Stephanie to stand up, and uh, it's so great to have them with us, Evan and Stephanie, and Evan... Uh, being born and raised in this house and his family. And so, Evan, we just honor you and Stephanie and the the kids. And uh, amen. It's amazing to see what the Lord is doing. And then also before uh, Brother David comes and I turn the service over to him, I'd like my lovely wife to stand. And I just want to wish her a wonderful, happy 35th wedding anniversary today. Hey, girl. I love you. (laughs) <laughs> yes, 35 years ago today, we said I do. I remember she sang to me, and I, you know, someone said, you better not cry. They're videotaping, and uh, she sang to me, Wes, you know, Wes, stand up, Wes, it's your fault that we met 37 years ago. Anyhow, but thank you, Wes. Uh, it was, we've been together 37 years, and uh, Wes put on a, a Christian concert, and that's where we met, so 37 years ago, and so I love you, dear. Happy anniversary, and uh, can we all stand to our feet and welcome Brother David Hogan as he comes, and hey, yay, bless you, thank you, sir. Yes, sir, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it, happy anniversary. Thank you. Yeah. Trying to catch you. Yeah. Yeah, that's an order. Holy Ghost. All righty. Y'all good today? Yeah. I want whoever ordered that beautiful sunshine, thank y'all. It was, it's nice. It was a little cool this morning, but it's fine. Holy Ghost. Bless y'all, huh? Shalaba. So, that would have been. I want to introduce my wife to y'all as well. She's, uh, this is Debbie. Yeah. We, we, we did 52 years. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's, uh, We didn't even know. You know what we did for our 50th, though? Let me tell you what we did. I went to Walt Disney World in Florida. I took my whole family, didn't 
That was our 50 year deal. So, it, it was, yeah, and it was Disney's 50th as well. So, I don't know what you think about Disney. I don't care. <laughs> It was about my family and my wife. It was, that's all it was. It wasn't any of those fights everybody's got. You want to say anything? I love you, Mom. I love you, too. Yeah. So, yep. And so we've been in Mexico most of our life. Uh, I, was, uh, I was an oil field worker in Louisiana. Worked offshore, and then I worked up here in uh, Alaska for a while. Uh, Just like anybody else, we was just trying to make some, like she called it a while ago, some coin. (laughs) And uh, and then God interrupted me on a trip up to Alaska, got me born again. And then I was back down in Louisiana, uh, because when, when I got born again, because <clears throat> my dad was this real important fellow with one of the uh, denominations. He was like a real important guy. So he, he said, look here, I want you to work for me. I, you know, and I don't know what that means. Uh, I, I was raised in a pastor's home, but uh, that doesn't qualify you to be a pastor. Uh, so he, he, but he's this doctor fella, got all this paperwork that, 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 you know, he's important. <clears throat> he said, I'll help you. So he started helping us. He gave me this little old church that was under his care. It was like, I don't know, 20 people or something. And then I got blasted with the Holy Ghost. Well, then that caused trouble. Do y'all understand that when, when, when people do, are not accustomed to having the Holy Ghost, and when he comes in the door, it irritates religious spirits. <laughs> okay, well, my dad was so happy that I was saved and I wasn't a gang member anymore and all this stuff that he was trying to hang with me, Right? even though I was full of the Holy Ghost. Well, all of his 20 people left, and, and then we got a new batch of people in that were pro-Holy Ghost. And then miracles started happening, and then God interrupted that. And uh, all I got, my calling uh, wasn't real spectacular. I was sitting at 5.30 in the morning with the family, getting ready to go to work, right? Because you have to work if you're hungry, you know? And, and, so, and so nowadays they're trying to change that, but it ain't going to. You got to work if you want to eat. And so just one word came in my mind. It was like in my mind. It wasn't even an angel or anything. It was just, I don't know. God likes to be, I guess he's normal, I guess. Uh, to me, it is now the way he is is more normal. But he just said Mexico, and I don't know. I apologize to everybody, but over there in Louisiana, we don't give a flip about <laughs> California or Mexico. All we want to do is go to work and make as much money as we can and have as much trinkets as possible, <laughs> and and just gratify the flesh. Now, that's what it's all set up to be, right? I'm just trying to be honest with you. I, and so the second time that word came, though, uh, I told the lady there, because we didn't have, like right now, I can open this thing right up right here, and I can get uh, lots of information, right? I don't have to go anywhere. But in those days, we had to actually go to a library. <laughs> and we, we, had to, we had to go get a book. And you had to sit down and read. <laughs> so it, it's different in those days. Uh, so I learned what I could about Mexico. And uh, so then I took a trip down to the state of San Luis Potosí in Mexico. 
Uh, and I'm sitting out there, y'all, I'm in a village, because I didn't know what a village was. I mean, I used to watch the Tarzan movies, you know, and I, but I mean, that's not exactly the same. <laughs> okay, and so I'm there, I'm with this old Indian, man, this, this fellow was amazing, because uh, the missionary sent me with this guy, and we went off, because I'm a woodsman, I don't know if you understand that term. I'm a survivalist person, and I enjoy, it's hard, but I enjoy uh, the hardness of, of surviving without the things you think are necessary, and I enjoy it personally, because uh, it just takes about four or five days, and you're, you submit. Your body submits to that, and you're okay. Well, I am. <laughs> <laughs> And so, anyway, we, uh, I'm sitting on a, on a log, a palm log, waiting on church. I don't, I, can't, I don't understand the language, not the Indian or the Spanish. I don't know the food. They don't even eat with spoons and forks. They use tortillas. You eat your spoon. Uh, and I didn't, I didn't know what kind of food it was. I didn't know any of that. And I'm sitting there, and God spoke to me and said, start here. And that was like coming up on 50 years ago. And uh, so we've been diligent to hang to those words. Only two words, start here. That's not very much. But it has worked out. Because now we have several thousand churches that we're blessed to be part of. Everybody looks at me as a dad, you know, and all that. But uh, I look to Jesus. This is what I do. So I'm going to, I want to start out because I was just in Norway. I don't know what you know about Norway. I, I still don't know much. But I've been to Finland, Sweden, now Norway. And that's the Viking people. And so I get over there. You know, it's a good group of folks. There's lots of them. And man, they are on fire. And I like being around people that worship. Thank you all. Much appreciation. It's like I feel the Holy Ghost burning. I, I like it. You see me, I'm not inhibited. I, I took over your prayer thing down here. <laughs> I, I, everywhere I go, if you tell me that you love Jesus, then I figure I can worship God. Uh, that's what I figure. Uh, and I, don't, I don't have, I used to be more intimidated. I'm not anymore. I've been in so many wars and shot. I've been left for dead five times in prison, beat with clubs. Dude, you can't hurt me. I'm not kidding you. And I'm harder to kill than you can imagine. <laughs> They've tried. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't ever think I was tough, but I did think Jesus is king. That's what I thought. And y'all, I, wanna, I just want to read you. Okay, so we went there and we had a great time. It was probably 1,500 adults and it was just awesome. I enjoyed them. I enjoyed their food. Uh, you know, everything. It's a different culture, different food and all that and language. But I enjoyed it. And I hooked up with them. We're going to go. I'm, I got invited. I need prayer about this. We're going in a few weeks. We're going to. Um, I'm going to be on the front lines uh, in the Ukraine where the war is. And there's, I guess lots and lots of people's getting saved. And uh, I want to go there and be part of that. So y'all pray about that, will you, please? And uh, I would like to not get killed. <laughs> Holy Ghost. But I want to read you something. He sent me, uh, Brother Olaf is his name. And uh, he sent me a, a WhatsApp. I, I just want to read it to you. You're going to like this. I like it. So I know you will. It says, uh, Brother David, thank you and your family for a wonderful time. We were stirred up in faith and spirit. That's just being grateful, you know, that's nice. I'll get to the, what I want in just a second. 
Uh, we received so many positive feed, so, so much fo- positive feedback and reports of healing and people personally meeting with God. See, that is the target. Me sitting up here telling you about all these miracles, I'm going to, I'm going to do that because it's encouraging. It helps your faith. But my goal is it, my, because my walk with God is stable. Okay, my marriage is stable. Our family is fairly stable. Uh, y'all have a family? Then you understand. <laughs> and and I just I just bless you. Hey, I mean it. But my most important thing is if I could help you to encounter. The glowing man, the feet of Jesus, the power of the gospel, the, the anointed one. Because that's what we all need is just, just one encounter. Uh, and it, things would work themselves out for us. Okay, and it says what? Now this, this, I like this. Uh, he just told me one, this, because of, to them, it's such a big deal. It, it's a big deal to me as well. Okay, this lady had, she was in a wheelchair, right? You ready? 50 years. Boy, I like this. Their family, they got generations of loving Jesus, but but what what we, it's that contradiction we was talking about yesterday. How, How can somebody that loves Jesus so much be sick this way? And how can you not get healed? See, we don't, we can't, we want it to be one way or the other. Well, what it means is you need to trust Jesus regardless of your surroundings. And even though we know the promises are ours, I believe what we were singing and what was going on a while ago. I believe that. That's who I am. You saw me. I'm up there. I'm, I'm getting out of that boat with them. I'm going to do it. Right? But sometimes we're asked to do things that are uncomfortable. And I ain't going to go into who's asking. I'm going to let him work that out. I don't care. Because it doesn't matter to me which side is asking us to do what. It matters that we trust Jesus. Yes. That's what matters is trust in Jesus. Okay? Because you got this lady sick for 50 years. And for some reason, uh, uh, God... Uh, God worked it out in space and time for us to be at the p- point where he wanted to heal her at that moment. And I, and I, can't, I don't understand that, and I'm not going to listen to your understanding either. <laughs> because it's complicated, you dealing with people's emotions and families and loved ones. Man, I, I want everybody healed, I do. But I I don't seem to get what I want very often. But we did this time. Uh, You hear me? I need you to rejoice in the victory. And it it says, uh, look what it says. It says, one, one of the ladies with serious back problems, 50 years. She was healed instantly after 50 years. Okay, so I don't have any of that worked out as to what all that space is about and time. But what I have worked out is I'm grateful for now. Okay, but, but watch, it, wasn't, it, it was more than just a physical healing because she got, uh, it says she was healed physically and psychologically because when you when you you're when your space is a wheelchair you're mentally in a bind and us that are that don't have that we don't understand or comprehend that torture so for you to get free physically and then to get a new start mentally wow i like that do you like that I want that. Say it. Say it. I want that. I want that in my family. Say it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I want that as well. And it's a lots of lots of stuff, more stuff. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm done with that. <laughs> now, I want I want to share some verses y'all don't know us very well, but but all I, all I do, I used to, all I did was I sought God for trying to raise the dead. Okay, that, that's what we are known for by y'all the most. Uh, everybody, oh, they're the dead raising people. We don't believe that. I, you know, and so for me, for you to tell me, that ain't possible. You know, that, that's easy for me because that's why you're called an unbeliever to me. <laughs> But for people who are believers and want to and want to believe and step into more of God and, and the godly the godly powers, uh, uh, then I want to talk to you, you unbelievers. I'm not going to argue with you because uh, we've seen people shot and die from loss of blood and and come back to life and. I don't know how they got their blood back. Uh, there was a kid got hit by a uh, Dodge Ram. Uh, he was nine years old, and the Dodge Ram bumper hit him in the head and blew his brains out. Killed the kid, and, and we prayed for him for like 18 hours. He come back to life, and he had new brains. So I don't, I don't know what to say to you. You know, your unbelief can't doesn't have any power up against up against people that have seen the dead raised and creation at the same time. So, uh, so I don't want to be rude, but I am going to be aggressive. Because we need more of Jesus. We need more of each other looking at each other saying we can do this. It's available. Let's work it out. Let's figure it out. Let's seek the Lord. Okay. So I want to I want to share a couple of things because I I noticed by because I travel so much I've noticed there's a thing out there called turmoil. People are being tortured uh, by trials and by friends making bad decisions and family members and and it's cruel. It's it, I don't like it. Go ahead and say it. I don't either. Say it. But, so I'm going to look for help. I'm going to look to God, the author and finisher of my faith. That's what I'm going to look for. So if you will, let's go to Hebrews. Uh, we was there yesterday in, ver in chapter 2, but today we're going to go to chapter 4. Because there, there's a thing that has happened in our home. Um, um, uh, we, I just went through the hardest battle of my life as far up to date. I was thinking, you know, whenever I got to, to the age, to, you know, the retirement age, that things would be better, you know? They, what? They, they, were, they ramped up. It didn't get easier. Are you serious? I'm supposed to have more wisdom. I'm supposed to have more understanding. I'm supposed to have an experience so I can avoid and evade some of this stuff. But it seems like I, I'm just now running into the big bad guys. And I don't like that. But it doesn't seem to matter what I like. What matters is that Jesus is king. That's what matters. So uh, let's look here at this uh, uh, Hebrews 4. And uh, I want to, I don't have time to do the whole deal. So we'll, let's start in verse 8 then. Uh, this mention of a rest. See, see, people want us to be calm, right? Uh, and when, when, when hell comes against you and starts taking away uh, things that you like, I like certain things, and I like I like health. My wife got sick a while back, and boy, I couldn't. I'm out there. I can literally go out to a service, raise the dead, come home, and my wife, I lay my hands on, same hand, raise the dead, touch her, and she stays sick. Dude, I, that's irritating. 
I'm not kidding you. You have to come to grips that Jesus is king. And you got to be able to trust him. Even if you can't sort it out logically, you, you have to figure out that Jesus is king. And that you can trust him. And, and I do like it because now both of us, it's, it's, I'm, I'm not going to say it's rare, but boy, we get hammered a lot. Like she's had 13 incurable diseases, this lady. And there she sits healed today. Da, 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 da. And I like that. I like it that she's healed. It feels good. You hear me? What, I want, what I'm trying to, I guess, say is that we go through the same exact gauntlet you do. It's called life. <laughs> and and it, it's not very, it does different things to different people. Uh, it, some people do what y'all call, I don't call it that. Y'all call it, they open the door for that. It's just you trying to find an excuse to satisfy your heart and so we can't blame God. I got some news for you. You live life, you're going to go through that gauntlet with the rest of us. And it's going to be hard to figure out here and there. I'm not kidding you. I, boy, like we was, uh, <clears throat> there was a guy that I really like. I like this fella. He was just, to me, he was a knucklehead in lots of ways, but the man could talk a fence post into getting saved. <laughs> I, I, I mean, he just, he, he just gifted with talk, you know, and I'm not, I'm not a good talker. I, things are awkward for me, you know, and uncomfortable. I, thank you, that's very nice. Thank you. That, I'm gonna have to have a hug on that one. Thank you, Thank baby. You, yes, ma'am. You know, and I just, I just, but I'm not afraid. I, I'm still going to push out there and do it, you know, because it's my job. And I like it and I'm good at it. But there, what I found out when I went to Mexico, there was some really talented people, gifted. But for one reason or another, they just left the job. And it, I got stuck with all the work, but I stayed, and God started using me. Isn't that weird? The least talented, less, not the best speaker, not the best one with linguistics, not the best guy, I just know how to be faithful. That seems to matter to the kingdom of God. But this fella, he was, uh, he was not a good guy to me, man. He embezzled money. But boy, he could, I'm telling you, he could, he could get a fence post to get born again, that guy. But then he got sick. And I, and I, I like this guy. And, I'm, and everybody was mad. They, he, I'm sure you got it figured out, Evan, who I'm talking about. Not very many people liked the guy. Because he was just... He was just annoying at life, you know. But man, the guy could preach. And he could build the kingdom. And so I had to figure out how do you work with people who are hard to work with? If you, if you are going to build the kingdom, there's something you need. It's called the rest of God. R-E-S-T. Say it. I want in. I want to be able to breathe. I want to be walking in peace in my life. And it doesn't matter if chaos is around me. <laughs> Say it, I want it. In Jesus' name. Yeah. And you know, he didn't listen and he, then he went blind and then he went, I don't know, he went deaf and he went, but you'd carry him out to a village and put somebody in front of him, even though he was tormented by his bad decisions in life, the dude could still get people saved. Yeah. The weirdest <laughs> fella. But I stayed with him, and he died finally. Thank you, God. 
Okay, so I said it, you would have just thought it. <laughs> Most people, you know, think it, but I'm the guy that turns everybody's face red. Like my wife, my wife tells me all the time, because I'll look at her and she'll just be flushed red. I go, are you sick? No, she says. Everybody else in here, David, is embarrassed. Just you're not. <laughs> but, it, but it's just, uh, I just want you to understand, we need to learn how to work with each other. We need to figure out this rest of God. We need to let people's gifts work, even though it seems like they're working against us sometimes. We need to let the mercy of God rule. Hello? Can y'all hear me? Because if you're breathing, you understand. And it says right here, look, if Joshua had given them rest, God would not, have, would not speak afterwards about another day. See, there, there's something that we got our hands on that we're busy uh, being important or being mad or divisive or whatever we're busy being. And we're missing an opportunity to walk in some energy that's available for us even in wartime. Right. I'm, not a, I'm not a naysayer preacher. I'm a positive faith preacher. I am. But we got, some, we got a hard road to hoe ahead of us. There's some danger that's been unleashed. And we need the peace of God to rule that thing. We need the rest of the Holy Ghost. We need, we need to be able to go around people like this lady in Norway, been suffering for 50 years. And, and if you would have asked me, is she going to get rid of her, her wheelchair today? I would have said, I don't have a clue. But I, I didn't have to have a clue. What I have to have is faith. What I have to have is peace. What I have to have is rest in me. Rest. I need rest. I'm an aggressive guy now. I'll bring you, if you'll go with me, I'll bring you to some places that are scary. And you'll, you'll just be looking at me like we should run. And I'm just sitting there looking at them. I'm not moving. Jesus is king. He's got this. Y'all got it or no? A fun thing happened to me. Y'all know Heidi Baker? All right. So I'm over there with them, you know, in Africa and Mozambique, right? And Ms. Heidi, she, she uses me like a weapon, like a battering ram. <laughs> okay, so she, you know, we're, we're at their thing in uh, Pimba, and she tells me, we got to go in a few you know, get ready, get your team ready. I said, all right. So, and then, so we show up, it's time to leave. And she says, now we're not coming back. And I said, well, I'm not going. She said, you have to go. You have to go, David. I said, does not coming back mean I'm going to be killed? Is that what you just said to me? <laughs> She said, probably so. I said, well, then I'm not getting in that truck. Uh, I, I said, you know, I might be a, a country boy, a hillbilly to you, Miss Heidi, but let me tell you one thing. I got this sorted out. <laughs> it's up to me whether I'll get that door handle or not. And that, ain't nobody going to force me in that truck. And here's what she said. We haven't been able to break this tribe. There are some villages of these. Uh, well, they're bad guys. I'm not going to curse them. Uh, we haven't been able to break them. She said, but you do this in Mexico, and you're going to help me do this. Walk over there, get the door handle. Just sitting now, I'm sold up. I'm mad at them. 
So we get out there, bumpity bumpity, four wheel drive for like a million hours. <laughs> and then you get out there, and there ain't no five star uh, embassy suites. You have to put your own tin up, and they, they do have lions and hyenas. And these cobras. That Mozambican cobra is a bad thing. And she said, pick your spot, Brother David. We'll get back here, hopefully. And I'm just looking around. Ain't any of it okay. No, this is not, it's not okay to be here. It ain't okay to keep going. It ain't okay. It ain't okay. It's just not okay. But your problem is, and you're not going to like what I'm fixing to tell you, but I'm under contract. I've been bought by the blood of Jesus. And I am an ambassador of the gospel. So therefore, that relinquishes, relinquishes my rights. Do you hear me? Okay. So I picked out a spot. My son set up my tent for me. And, and I'm sitting out there waiting on time to go. Just sold up. We get to this village. And I mean, buddy, it's on. It's not awesome. There must be a hundred of these uh these Muslim guys, and they're mad. They got guns. They got all this stuff. And because, uh, because, let me let me say, let me go on record with you. There's a couple of things I need to say to you. I know what they're teaching us in this country, but what I have found being there ain't that way. Those people are awesome. You hear me? I, I know a bunch of Muslims that I'd rather be with than most Christians. Did you hear what I just said to you? I said, did you hear what I just said to you? Man, them people are amazing. I find them, I find myself to be like them. With my discipline and the way I seek God and all of this, I'm more like the way they are than you. And I'm not talking about Christianity versus Muslim. I'm talking about human beings and discipline and so forth, the way we think. Okay, so we get there, and, and it's, oh, my God, scary, you know. And Brother Roland, he's sitting there, and he, he's just laughing at me. He said, you shouldn't have come. I said, dude, I tried to tell you that back at the Pimba. He's, he's just laughing at me. You're not getting out of here, David. I said, Maybe so. We'll see. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what happened. What your God's power is. Uh, it ain't black white. It's spirit. Did you hear me? I need you to hear me because where I grew up, it was tough as well. But. When I'm standing in a Muslim village that have been given the right to kill white, American, male Christianity. I'm all of those. <laughs> I don't get an exempt card. Okay, there you go. All right, so, and I'm not there uh, in their face, Child there ain't no challenge. Dude, they're all standing there with AKs. You don't challenge that. You submit to that. Did you hear me? And so this, Miss Heidi gets up there, things started, and she gets up there, listen, I don't know what y'all know about her, but I might know her different than you. She is a great white shark. She is a tiger. She is... She is on a mission, and she is possessed <laughs> to get them people saved. 
that they need Jesus. And I, and I, I said, whew, because I understand enough Portuguese. I mean, I speak Spanish fluently, so I get enough Portuguese out of the deal. And she's speaking Makura, and so some people are telling, interpreting it for me in Makura, and I told them, buddy, we need to run. <laughs> and then here comes the imam, and this fellow walks up. I'm, he is the most beautiful. He looks like you cut him out of a rock. He's a bushman. And, and, he's, and he's, golly, he's scary. Cause he's so perfect <laughs> and she's right up there in his face <laughs> and he's big he, he's probably four or five inches taller than me big old fella and all of a sudden she turns around she says to me uh brother david i go <laughs> she said i need you to take this one and I said, no. <laughs> I mean, she's not very big. She's a little big person. And, and she, but she doesn't got it all stirred up, right? And, and I, there ain't no, the way I was raised is you take care of women and kids. Period. So I walk up there. Man, I can't, I can't hardly breathe, y'all. <laughs> Listen, fear turmoil is anti-peace. It's anti-rest. And I went up there and put my hands on her stomach and put her behind me and I stepped in her place and I'm looking right here. This, I'm looking up at this guy. He ain't, he's, a, he's, he's a magnificent specimen, y'all. I'm serious. I was so nervous. And he goes, y'all need to leave. I said, we're not leaving. I, uh, I know you got that figured out. And his English was way better than mine. <laughs> I've got swamp English from Louisiana. This fellow was educated somewhere in England, you know. I mean, he was, he's speaking Queen's English, and I'm speaking alligator English. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I mean, this fellow's educated. I mean, he's owned. You hear me? I mean, this ain't this ain't awesome to me. There ain't. I don't have any chips. I, I don't have anything to play. I don't have. Uh, this is done. He's got all the chips and. The best hand. I said, now listen to me. Now, I'm not here disrespecting you. I'm here to tell you that Jesus is king. He looked at me. He said, we serve a different God. I said, I understand that. But you're wrong. And I need you to understand that I'm saying that because God loves you. I don't even know what he looks like. And I need you to let us do our thing. He said, you can't do that. And he stepped back from me because I was right up close to him. Well, I stepped up on him again. <laughs> now, I'm right there. I mean, we're right there. And this went on for a minute. And all of a sudden, I looked to my right, and he had, you know, like 30, 40 of his people there lined up beside him. And there's Christians done come up there and got beside me, and we're lined up. It was real now. But they got the guns and all the rights. So what do you do? Y'all tell me. Tell me what you do. Come on, sitting over here in Oakland, California. Well, San Leandro. San Leandro. So how do I, what do I say to convince this fellow?
Come on. Ain't nobody going to curse you for telling me something. I'm not. Let me just tell you how to do it. Can I tell you how to do it? It's really easy. You head butt him. I reached up and tagged his nose with my forehead because I couldn't reach his forehead. He's way too big for me. And he goes, are you crazy? I said, I wish I could tell you I tripped, but I didn't. He said, now watch what he said. He said, I ain't never met anybody like you. I said, I get that often. He said, all right, this is what's going to happen. You're going to pray for me. I said, what? I said, do you understand I've read the Quran? And you consider me to be an infidel. It's illegal for me to touch you. He said, you're right. You're correct. I said, I know it. I ain't going to touch you. It's a trap. He said, it's not a trap. I am the law here. And I give you permission to lay your hands on me and pray for me in peace in my village. I said, I said, okay, does that give us right to lay hands on your people? He said, absolutely. Y'all, and instantly, y'all know Miss Heidi, she just, <laughs> she went off, boy. And we ended up, I think it was something like it was three or four blind, healed, like five or six deaf, cripples. And yeah. And it, and it ended up, I, I want to say it was somewhere like 35 or 45 people, uh, Muslims, got saved. And we broke through the barrier. And that man is now a really good friend of mine. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't suggest you doing things my way. But I would suggest you doing something. Rest. That was, a, that was as tight of, of a hatred environment. Because men have worked up how to keep us all fighting each other. So they can control us. But I'm here to bring rest into the mix. To bring peace of the God of Israel into the mix. You hear me? I just wish you would have seen all the people that got saved. And they gave us space. We have a church there now. We have... It ended up the king came and we got given all the villages and it's a big deal, y'all. It's your God. It's your God. Where, where people have sat down and thought how to keep us all at odds with each other. God is working on working that out. Look, look what it says. I want you to see. So then there is an awaiting full and complete, verse 9, Sabbath rest. Say, I want it. I want to be at peace. Say it. I want to be at peace. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Because it's available. Even though we all live the same gauntlet, I call it gauntlet, it's life. And you, you get things sorted out and you, and you finally get it going and you start mashing the motor a little bit and you get confident. And the next thing you know, life does a 90 degree turn and you're flipping out in the cotton field. What is that? Well, I need to speak rest and peace over you. I need, I need a complete fullness of God to come to us to, because what, it's going to ramp up. It's not going to go back to what you had. It's, madness is coming. If you understand the end times, you understand things are going to ramp up. Well, it, it's looking like we might be in that stage of life, of, of, of history. 
Now look what it says. Look at this. For the true people of God. Say, I want to be true. I want to be a, a son of God. Say it. And you ladies, you are daughters of Zion. Say, I want to be that. Go, go, let's keep going. Look. For he who has once entered God's rest has ceased. Say, I want to cease, I want to cease. Weariness. weariness. See, some of you are, you're not sick, but life has dealt you a negative hand. And so you, you're worried, you're in turmoil, you're, you're, you're just, you can't figure it out. There's nowhere to go to get help. There's no, you're on your own. Well, I don't think so. If we can find ourselves the courage to submit to the Father of lights, the creator of heaven and earth, the goodness of God, I believe we can tap into this rest. And even though around us is constant war and negative, I believe we can be at peace and progressing positively. It doesn't touch us. And now saying that, uh, there, every time I go out to a village, there'll be two or three mothers come up to me crying and weeping because, and I'm talking about godly women crying and weeping to me because their children, either the daughter has been captured and forced into the, the sex slave business, or one of the sons has been captured and forced into the child soldiering. You don't, you don't understand. You that are drug addicts in here, I rebuke you. You that have a doctor's thing and you're a drug addict, I rebuke you. Listen to me. There's people dying so you can get high. And you sex fiends in here... Those children, you, you're out of order. Stop it. There's a rest. There's another way to walk. I've gone out to villages and a mother, they'll be waiting on me and there'll be a sack uh, uh, sitting there and they'll, t they'll be weeping and, they'll, and I look in the bag and there'll be a, a, ba a child chopped up in pieces in the and they'll be screaming at me, help. They want me to pray for the baby to be raised from the dead. And I do want to, and I do pray. Most of the time I have to go get a shovel and help them bury it. You, I don't agree with complacency and... And us four no more and me happy and forget the rest of the folks. I, I believe there is a rest for the true people of God where we can then turn and help people. And Grandpa, I, hopefully I'm not scaring y'all's family because of him being down there. We're at war. And God protects us. And them little babies migrates or are, are living there as well. It's necessary. You hear me? You hear me, Mom? And I'll do my best. You, of course, you know that. Take care of them, but because I am doing that. But we've got to be a defensive line against hell. We got to be offensive. We have to walk in the peace of God. I need you to understand that there's a war on for the souls of men. And it has to be confronted. Hello? 
and I'm 72 and I should be retired somewhere on some beach drinking a pina colada, <laughs> hopefully without alcohol. And look what it says. Ceased from weariness and pain. Say these words with me. Weariness, pain, you don't have a place to live anymore. Get out in Jesus' name. I just wish you could see these, these cartel people coming up in our services and getting saved. But you know, if we weren't there, the doorway wouldn't be, the foundation wouldn't have been laid, the, the opportunity for their souls wouldn't be available so that we need to be there. And I'm not trying to convince you that I'm right about my calling. I'm going to do it whether you are in agreement or not. <laughs> it's just got to be done. And I need peace over you. I need rest in your home. Here? All right, it says, so verse 11. Y'all see, you, you see I got this ze zealousness covered over here. It says, let us therefore be zealous, zealous and exert ourselves. You see me, I'm an exerter. I go out of my way to find people and get them healed and born again. We would, Evan was in a prison, what day was you in that thing in Wyatt? About four weeks ago? About a month ago, he was sitting in a prison that houses all hardcore uh, cartel criminals. And God has opened up all these prisons to us. And, he, and how many was it got saved? 10, 12? Uh, yeah. yeah. A lot of people got saved, but you have to actually go there to do it. Yeah. And to, to get the opportunity to go into one of these, uh, these uh, hard prisons, you have to be have a good testimony. You have to be somebody that the government can trust. I need rest over you. I need you to not be afraid of these ideas I'm giving you. Hear me? I need you to do like I did. I need you to get that car door handle and go and sit down. It don't matter if you're a little, little stirred up and a little huffy about it. That's okay. Just keep walking forward. Hello? And it says, let us be zealous, exert ourselves, and striving. There's that word strife. Strife is bad if it's negative. But there is a striving of diligence, of goodness of God that needs to be appropriated. We need to become that. Our striving needs to be for the kingdom of heaven. Okay. And we need to do to enter the rest. Look, look what this says, to know and experience it for ourselves. You see me up here, I'm healthy, my wife is healthy, we're blessed, we've made some good decisions, we're grounded in some good things, but I, that's great, and that's a good testimony, but I need this in your home. I need your encounter with God to be like ours. Hello? Okay, and it says that no one, I, I don't want any of you to suffer unnecessarily. Let no one, boy, this is so good to me, fall or perish by the same kind of unbelief and disobedience. So say it with me. Unbelief, Unbelief. disobedience, disobedience, pack your bag. In Jesus' name. And it says right here in verse 12. This is, everybody goes to this verse, but I think you should read verse, the first seven or eight first is what I think. Yes, one through 11, that's right. And then we read 12. <laughs> and it says right here, for the word of God speaks. Say, speak to me, word. Word of God, talk. Bring healing and health. Bring victory and peace. 
Let the love of God come on me. Because it's alive. Say, I like, like being alive. Say it. Yeah, y'all, I can't tell you. I was there running that thing the other day in uh, Reading on that, uh, on that uh, Sacramento River. And I'm out there. It's, oh, it's freezing. It's 30-something, 30 33, I think it was. It's cold. Gosh, I'm cold. Ah! And, I, you know, I left that bed, that warm woman. What is wrong with me? Lord have mercy. <laughs> but, but I like, y'all, I like being alive. I like having the energy to do stuff. There ain't, you ain't, it ain't going to be very many people my age can do that stuff. And I like that liveliness. Say it, I want it. And, and that last, where that, where that, there's an invisible line that's the starting, but there's also an invisible line that's the end. And I can't tell you the relief I felt when I made one step and I was across that line. That thing blinked over on 30 miles. That feeling, that accomplishment that of being alive. Say, I want it. The Word of God is alive. Say it. And I want to be alive. Say it. Yeah, you do. And it's powerful. Say, I want it. I want power of God. And everybody fusses at me because that's all I ever talk about is the power of God. You know, and I get fussed at, fussed at, but there's more to it than that. Really? Okay, well, let's go ahead and show me. How's that going for you? All that knowledge idea. Yeah. How's that working? Uh, I'm not, there ain't no challenge. I'm not even going to act like there is. Uh, but look what it says. God speaks is alive and full of power, making the word of God. Now watch this. Everybody, how'd you get it going? Well, God does it. He activates it in your spirit. It says right here, making it active, making it operative, energizing, and being effective. Say, I want that. I want, I want effectiveness in my life. I want energy. Say it. And I don't need it from opium. Say it. I don't need it from alcohol. I don't need it from mejuanas. I need it from Jesus. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. You know, I was up there, I was over there, it was uh, Boulder, Colorado, and I was talking, and this littlest old, littlest old chubby grandma come walking up to me, you know, she said, I'm glad to hear you running, Brother David, you know, and I look at her, you know, Cause we all profile every one of us. So I got this, I got this little old woman about five, five, right? And I'm looking at her and she's a little chubby thing, you know? And I go, I'm, I'm glad you're happy. You know who she is? She is the woman ultra marathon, the best in the world. She wrote the book, women. And, and I found that out. I was a little bit humbled when I, my profile was just a little off. <laughs> she was out there with her daughter. Her daughter was eight months pregnant, and she helped her daughter run a 50-mile ultra. Eight months pregnant. So we're lacking in a few areas of life, wouldn't you say? Come on, I need to, let's upgrade, please. Let's. Please, rest, peace, life, energy, effectiveness. Don't be content. Don't, don't be content. I mean, I am a content person, peaceful with her. Oh, man, that's nice. But, but I'm always pushing for greater. Hello? So would you put that picture up? Picture? Uh oh. 
I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> now I want you to I want you to look at this. This here is a kid. You see the need and paint little building. That's one of our churches there in Mexico. But I want you to look at the fellow. Look how skinny he is. What's wrong with him? It's called tuberculosis. You know what he's doing right there? Because I didn't even recognize that kid. He had been, we had been through this long ordeal of tuberculosis, right? And you don't win that one. Y'all know that, right? We won that one. Listen, this kid is a pastor's son. He's a pastor's son, and you don't think they, that they should be getting tuberculosis. You think if, in their, because, because the way we've been taught in the past is if, somebody, if there's something at your house, somebody did some kind of sin to invite it in. Well, that's just not always true. I know these people personally. I know them to be godly people. Okay. I, I live with them. Okay. So, so all of a sudden the pastor comes up, my son's got tuberculosis, and I just looked at him. What? And of course, it went the route. He went all the way to the bottom. Every kind of Indian method, every kind of, there's not a whole lot of money, so there's not a lot of doctors involved, but there was some. And finally, they all, everybody, the witch doctors, the doctors, everybody says, there are no more herbs. He's going to die. So what do you do? You just keep doing the same thing you started out doing. You hear me? There ain't no magic pill. I don't know an equation you don't know. I know that Jesus is king and we have to trust him. And that boy right there, that's the day I found out that he was healed of tuberculosis. Yeah. And I gave him the microphone. I said, tell us how it happened. Because we're all just sitting there. Because it's not legal. Because natural law has the upper hand. And these diseases are natural law. When they get a hold of your body, they're going to run their course. You're going to die. It's going to happen. Unless there's a supernatural law that counters it. You're right. So... So I, I want you, because things are bumpy out here, y'all. They are. Life has got a little bumpy on us. You hear me? And it's going to get more. I got into one of our places. I, was, uh, I got caught by this uh, series of tornadoes. They were spawned off of a hurricane, right? But the hurricane wasn't excessively dangerous. It was a Category 2. Now, they're dangerous, but not like the rest of the big brothers. And we was okay until this one band of thunderstorms came off of the Gulf. And it had all these embedded tornadoes in it. Man, they tore our little place to shreds. So I'm out there. My wife always gets nervous when I'm around in the, in the storms because I go out there and talk to them. I mean, Jesus did. I mean, so I'm going to. I go, I go out there, and I'm literally holding on the grass. It's trying to take me. And then, I'm not kidding you, there was these lightning. Came. I was like in a cage. Uh, it was nine or ten lightning bolts around and it was it tore us up it wouldn't listen to me <laughs> but you know what happened when the storm passed you know what we did put on our shorts put on our gloves our work boots went out there cleaned her up and rebuilt you hear me and here's what you say. You missed us. We're the bullseye. Bring it on. 
Jesus is king. We got this. Where'd you get the money? Where'd you get the, how do you get the nails? Who's going to help you? I don't, I don't have any of those answers. What I have is Jesus is king. And there's a rest for us. Come on, Papa. Take a breath with me. Hear me? Come on now. Hear me? We got to do it. Okay? Okay, everybody? I want your people healed like he was healed. I want your 50-year people that's hurting to be healed like that lady was healed. Good families. They were in the war. They were tortured by that demon over there in Europe. And in the, their pay, they got saved in the war in the camps, right? And, and their reward was one of the daughters got sick for 50 years. What is that? How does that? Why is that okay? I don't like that. Hear me? I don't like that. But that one day, it all lined up. And we touched that old lady, and dude, she jumped up and got healed right on the spot, and her mind was cleared. Come on. Y'all stand up. Let's do something else. And <clears throat> so, Deborah, por favor, vaya orando por las, las cosas. Huh? Are we okay still? Yes, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Can we pray for a few people? Yeah. yeah. All right. So... Y'all, you can tell I really like my job. <laughs> I figured out how to do some of this stuff. I stayed with the game, you know. I got to knock off my horse because I'm a horseman. I'm a cowboy. I got to knock off my horse. Get up. Tighten the cinch up. Climb right back up on that thing. Yep, it's a bummer sometimes. Sure is, but I need, I need you to understand that Jesus loves you. Yes. Let's get on down that gauntlet, what do you say? But let's do it with peace. Yes. Let's, let's do it with rest. Let's do it with understanding that Jesus loves us. Uh, so I need you to want to let Jesus touch you. So some of you in here may have been uh, annoyed or disappointed with the way things went for you, and you might have got off track a little bit. Uh, and you, and I, would, I would probably say, if, if I was to listen to your horror story, I would probably agree with you that you did right to quit. But we can't. I can't let you. I have to try to talk you into keeping on taking another step. I have to be that guy that looks at you with tears in my eyes just like you've got because the things we've lost are great to me, important to me. And I feel it. I, it hurts my feelings. But you see, that's not where you live. You don't live in there. You move that over. And you just keep walking with Jesus. You can trust him. So if you got sidetracked and and you might have backslid and you want to come back to Jesus, I invite you to come up here today. Or if you don't know Jesus at all, I want to invite you to get yourself what we call born again. In the name of Jesus. If you're sick in your body, if your marriage is on shaky turbulence, if you're finances have you don't even know what that means anymore they just left if you need help in these areas i promise you if i just give me just a little hold your hand for a couple of seconds we can change some of that stuff we can agree as touching any one thing and it shall be done up for them of by the father that's what the Bible says. And I know what logic is saying. But let's go ahead and have a little faith in this arena for a minute. Can we do that? So if that's you, just come on down here with us and we'll, we'll work on what we got. In Jesus' name.
bless you, sir. Just come on up here. We'll sort it out. Boy, that thing's soft. That's nice. <laughs> Y'all are welcome. You hear me? You wouldn't believe what I, the amount of time and money I spend to dig a little piece of gold out of that mountain to get some people saved. <laughs> it's worth it. I found out that you are worth it. So am I. <laughs> Turns out I'm right about this stuff. Yeah. So what's wrong right here? Tell me. Devil. I agree. Bad devil. Is this your? Yeah. Jesus. Bless you, baby. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. I bless your home. Fire of the Lord. Touch mom. Touch the baby. That's right. Come on. Come on. Holy. Holy. Huh? I got one. What is it, baby? Take this noisy thing, baby. Oh, serious? All right. It's okay if I touch you. You are with that. Bless you, baby. say as a brother Hogan is praying for people that are sick and need healing just go ahead and pray about what amount you should give um, if you hear two amounts the higher amount is God okay and go ahead and bring it on down as you as God just lays on your heart what to give we're going to be singing right now while people are getting just worship him where you are believing in faith get excited that God wants to heal you those that's up here get excited that he wants to do it Come on, he wants to do it. So get excited about it.
lift up your hands like this. Come on. Heavenly rain is falling. Heavenly rain is coming now. Heavenly rain is falling down. Come on, sing it with me. Heavenly rain is falling. It's coming. 